Hi friends, welcome to the second session of Tortoise SVN. In the first video, I have covered basics of configuration management tool and Tortoise SVN features. In case you have missed to watch first part, kindly do so visiting my video library. In today's practical session, we are going to cover Tortoise SVN installation, use and significance of repository, followed by live demo of how to create a repository, import a project, check out a working copy of the project, making changes in the file, adding more files into the project, viewing project history, and the last one undoing changes. Let's start with installation information of Tortoise SVN. First, system requirements. Tortoise SVN runs on Windows XP with service pack 3 or higher and is also available in both 32-bit and 64-bit flavor. The installer for 64-bit windows also includes the 32-bit extension parts, which means you don't need to install 32-bit version separately to get the Tortoise SVN context menu and overlays in 32-bit application. The important point to remember is, if you are using XP, you must have at least the service pack 3 installed. It won't work if you haven't installed that service pack yet. Installation Tortoise SVN comes with an easy to use installer. Double click on the installation file and follow the instruction. Please reboot the machine after the installation. The point to remember is you need administrative privilege to install Tortoise SVN on machine. Now before we get stuck into working with the real files, it is important to know about repository. Subversion uses a central database which contains all your version control files with their complete history. The database is referred as the repository. The repository normally lives on a file server running in the subversion server program, which supplies content to the subversion client like Tortoise SVN on request. I am pretty much done with the theoretical information. Now let's try out some of the most common features of Tortoise SVN. For a real project you will have a repository set up somewhere safe and a subversion server to control it. For the purpose of this tutorial we are going to use subversion local repository feature which allows direct access to a repository created on your hard drive without needing a server at all. For this tutorial, I will create an empty folder here on the local hard disk and will rename it to SVN repository. Once the empty folder is created, I will right click and I will see the option for Tortoise SVN. These options will be available only when you, when you have successfully installed Tortoise SVN on the local machine. On the right click under the Tortoise SVN, you have an option of creating a repository. So when you select this option, this, the folder which is selected will become a repository. So I click on this option. Now it shows the message repository created and the location of this file server path. I save this path, click on this option, create folder structure. Again it will show you the message default directory successfully created and click on the OK button and again OK button. Now when you go into that repository, it shows you the lot of uh, subfolders and sub uh, read text files and the some other format files also. That means the default folder structure for the repository has been created with some important folder. So this is the way we create a repository for SVN. Now we have created a SVN repository which is currently empty. The next job would be to check in the files or the code onto the SVN repository to version control. For this job, I have created a source copy folder which is currently a test folder for me in this case and inside that doc folder and some two temp file, test1 and test2. To import this folder on SVN repository, I select this folder and right click. I go to option Tortoise SVN and again in that option I go to import button, import option. When I click on the import option, it shows me the dialog box. 
with the URL of repository which specify the location of the repository or sometimes it would be a web URL which is called as a repo browser and the another option of giving a message for importing so we can give any message say for example test1 and click on the ok button it will start importing the file once the importing is finished it will show the message so import finished we will click on the ok button to see whether the files are uploaded properly or not I select again any of the folder right click go on to the tortoise SVN option and the very first option called repo browser when I select this option it comes with the URL of SVN repository if it is not giving you the proper URL of the repository then you need to provide it explicitly and then I click on the OK button it opens up a window explorer with the file location I see a option called doc folder which was a temporary folder inside the source copy I select this folder right -click, double click on this and I see two files which are created on my source folder the test one and test two so this is the way we import a source copy files or folder onto the SVN repository Now that we have imported successfully our project on a sphere repository, the next job would be to create a working copy of the folder so that we can work on a daily basis without affecting the source copy of the folder. To create the working copy of the folder which we uploaded on a sphere repository, I will select the folder in repo browser or window explorer and will select the option checkout. The checkout dialog will give me the option of selecting the checkout directory as in second option. I will specify the path for the checkout and without touching any of the option at the bottom I will click on the OK button. Once the checkout is finished click on the OK button go on to the working copy you will see a default folder with .svn extension and test1 and test2 files. So this is the way we create a working copy of the source copy. So far we have learned how to create SVN repository, import a source folder onto the SVN repository and create a working copy of the source folder. Now we will make some changes in the files that we have already in the working copy. We will make some changes in those files and we'll try to commit those changes we'll select the working copy of the folder and right click on the folder to go to the option called svn commit this dialog box will show you the files which are not version controlled or the file which is which we modified recently so this shows that okay the test one file has recently been modified and not been committed to svn server okay we'll select this file and click on the OK button. Changes will be committed and you will see the successful committed message on the screen. We'll click on the OK button. Again we'll go to the repo browser to see whether the changes are successfully made or not. We'll go and we'll do a quick refresh here and open test1 file it shows that the changes are properly committed on SVN server. So this is the way we make changes in the file and commit those changes on SVN. In this part of the video I will show you how to add files on SVN server when the project is already created on SVN. So for that I have created or I added one more file test3 with test3 information in that. This file is not uploaded on SVN already. So my next job is to upload this file on SVN server. I will again select this working copy of the folder and go to the tortoise SVN option and will go to the option add. This the add option will show me the file which is not added or the file which is recently created. I will select this file and click on the OK button. This will add the file once the file is successfully added I will click on the OK button now we need to understand that the file is is added but not committed on the SVN server so I again select 
this folder right click on it and select the option SVN commit it will show me the test 3 file which is not committed I select this file and click on the OK button to make this changes permanent on SVN server to make sure the changes have been done properly I will go to the repo browser select the folder you will see the test 3 files on this SVN so this is the way we add more files on SVN server when one of the important feature of tortoise SVN is the ability to show project history to show the project history for the working copy right click on the folder go to the tortoise SVN options the very first option show log you select this option and it will open up a log message window top end shows a list of revisions committed along with the start of commit message if you select one of this revision the middle pan will show the full log message for that revision and the bottom pan will show a list of changed file and folders each of these pans has a context menu which provide you with lot more ways of using the information in the bottom pan you can double click on a file to see exactly what changes were made in that revision so this is the important piece of information when you need to see the project history in our last segment i am going to tell you about undoing the changes that we have made but not committed on swin server we have a option of undoing the changes or reverting the changes to the previous one if we have not committed those changes on swin server to do so right click on the folder go to the tortoise SVN options and there is an option called revert when you select this revert option it sets file to the previous one when the file is not committed this is the way you can undo the changes thanks for watching my video if you find this tutorial useful please click on like button and do share it with your friends you would also like to subscribe to my channel or visit my website whose URL is flashing on top of this video for getting the latest update. Once again, thank you.